Understand what other producers ain't got shit that you want. Uh. You're hella type of beast, that's why I like to fuck with you. And even if it ain't about business, I'm gonna still show love to you. Uh. From the OAK, and anytime you wanna get away from LA, just make a call and say, hey, Tom, bitch, pop nigga, I'm coming up. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, don't trip, I'm gonna pick you up in West Side. And if a nigga trip, <laughs> we gon' make change. Catch me in Oakland with this nigga Tony Vick at an A's game. Yeah. It's a dang shame, dang tame on the fucking beat. You know how I do it, you stupid if you don't wanna fuck with me. Yeah. Moving like black feet on the track beat. Freestyle yeah. rhyme bigger than Shaq feet. Me moving with Shaq too, bro. <laughs> moving them track beats. Niggas talking, you niggas is whack hating, so you try to smack me. Clap heat. It's what a nigga do. Y'all niggas is pitiful. I freestyle battle against your interludes. Nigga, well, I'll leave you with a missing too. Niggas be screaming and bitching about all the bullshit that they finna do. Yeah, I'm flipping, dude. On the fucking brandy beat. Nigga Niggas talking, niggas like, yo, I can't stand you heat. Y'all niggas is sitting there acting. Y'all niggas is small, get ate up just like sandwiches. This ain't Tom yeah. Big, man. That nigga, he so sick. He the type of dude to donate a whole bunch of blood to a crib. Uh. I'm the type of dude to steal your cards in, not dip. I'm the type of smack your girl and dick all over this. Uh. And I'm the type to say, my bad, I'm sorry for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> So, just came up with this idea. I just got to the office. So, I'm gonna start telling y'all stories I never told nobody before. I ain't never even told none of my none of my homies these stories. Just cause they're not important, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna share this story with y'all. So, the whole purpose of telling you this story is not to like expose nobody it's, it's to like bring y'all into my world of things that have happened when i was along my like producer journey you know what i'm saying like when i was in like the pinnacle of my career as a producer shopping for placement opportunities everything mattered every impression mattered like people were calling left and right i had just did the song for lil wayne for a lil wayne mixtape well it didn't come out yet like i was still producing every day like every day so like all kind of stuff like when you went when you went outside you didn't know what was gonna happen you know what i'm saying it was right before everybody started popping you know what i'm saying like i think it was like oh seven oh oh 2007 because it was before i started working for felly my managers george and shack one of my managers worked for universal my other manager worked for interscope the guy worked for universal the girl manager worked for interscope like at the time, everybody was hungry. Like they believed in me. Like they were pushing my music like crazy. I was pumping out music like crazy. I was, I didn't know how to speak. I was nervous. I didn't like going out. I didn't like being around people. I just wanted to stay in there and make beats. So I'm gonna tell y'all a name and y'all can Google the name. Stepney Johnson used to be the president of Urban Music for Interscope Records back in the day. My girl manager was related to him. She was like a, um, she was like a, his like play niece, but they grew up together. Like her, his son, who this story is about, grew up with my my manager. So my manager had already worked for Interscope. She had been there for some time. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if anybody can remember back then, man. But you had like Garrett, you had like Marcus Heiser. Um, those were like the like the key people that I knew at Interscope. We used to be up there all the time, man. Like Marcus used to always play my beats for 50 Cent. Garrett used to always try to get all the LA producers like in there with artists and, you know, placements and stuff like that. So like back then as a producer, man, like anything can happen, man. Like a rapper can call you to the studio. You got to pull up with beats. You know what I'm saying? Like you can end up in a like a like a big studio like Record Plant Paramount, or you can end up at like a garage studio in a room full of like Bloods or Crips, and you just gotta like be ready for whatever. So rumor was that Stepney Johnson's son, Stepney Johnson Jr., had just graduated from Florida State, I think, and he he wanted to get into the music industry. So Step, we call him Big Step, Little Step. So Lil Step was just getting out of college, and since his dad was a president of uh, Urban Music, Big Step put Lil Step on. He put him in the he just he just came out of college and just threw him in the industry, made him an A and R. You know what I'm saying? So everybody was like the name was buzzing, like Lil Step. Step's son was coming to work for Interscope. You know what I'm saying? And then my manager was dope because she grew up with Lil Step, so it was like, yo, Lil Step. And then like when he came when he came to Interscope. 
like his pops just threw him in and was like, I forgot the, the artist that he was over as an A&R, but Step instantly came in. He was driving his dad's Benz, like he was moving. You know what I'm saying? The one thing that I thought was really dope that I remember was we got a chance to go to Mike Conception's mansion in like Sherman Oaks off of Sepulveda. Nas was there and it was crazy because the first time I had actually been in a studio session with Step, I guess Nas was there and some other rappers were there, but Mike Conception let Step use the studio because he was Big Step's son. And so one of my beats was being used for an artist that Step was a and r and for Interscope. And he wanted me to come and just be a part of the process. So I got to the studio and they was rapping over my beat. You know what I'm saying? Nas had just left. And uh, when we left, we got the tour this 26, I think it was like a 26 bedroom house. Bro, it took us like an hour and a half to tour this house. Like it was crazy. That was the first time that I actually worked in the studio with Step. Step like really loved my music. Like he really wanted to help me. He wanted to like put, he wanted to like help me to get on. Plus he was fan with my manager. So like my managers used to really put me in some dope positions. You know what I'm saying? But boom, all right, anyway. So at this time, like Step used to come to the house. Like we was connected, like we was cool. You know what I'm saying? He used to always mess with me, dang, like keep killing it, like send me beats, send me beats, all of this, right? So one night Step called and was like, yo, I got some rappers that, I got some rappers from New Orleans that we're thinking about signing. They just flew in. I'm gonna be with them for the weekend. I wanna try to get in the studio with Dane. So we was trying to figure out like, we was trying to figure out a spot where we can go like, and nobody had a studio. So they, they wanted to get in that night. Cause I guess the night he called, he was like, yo, these rappers, like it was like three rappers or three artists. And he was like, yo, they're only gonna be in town for the rest of the day. They fly out at like five o'clock in the morning. I want to try to get a session in with Dane before we dip. So my manager was like trying to call around and see if we can find a studio. And one of her one of her homies named Rock, who was an engineer, she called him as a last minute favor and was like, yo, Rock. Rock was like a producer. He used to produce and be a photographer. He used to work with like Tyga and a bunch of other people. And I think he did some stuff with Lil Wayne. I'm not sure, but I know for sure he was like, he came out of like Tyga's camp when Tyga was younger. And so she called Rock and was like, yo, Rock, like we need a spot. So Rock was like, all right, Shaq, like I'll mess with you. She, he really messed with Shaq. So he was like, look, I'm not going to, at first he said we couldn't use this spot. And then he called back and was like, look, y'all can use my spot, but I'm not going to be there. So I'm going to leave the keys under the door. And you know what? When you leave the keys under the door, I'm going to leave the keys under the door. Y'all go in the studio, use the studio. When you're done, put the keys back under the door. Right? So me and my manager pull up. And then step pull up in the bins with these dudes from New Orleans, right? So we in the stool. I make some beats. We in there. I don't remember how long we were in there. We were in there for some hours, though. And we basically was just like, yo, let's just stay up until it's time for them to go to LAX and, you know, get on their plane. So we, we made some songs and then we started wrapping up the session and I guess one of the dudes went to the back balcony to go smoke and then he came back. And then I didn't even know it was a back door or whatever, right? We finished the session, everything's cool. I got to connect with these artists. I got a chance to like chop it up and sit in the studio with Step. I just thought that was dope because I always felt like, you know, being close to Step, Step was gonna, you know, put me on or something. That's just kind of what I always thought. We all, we all, we clean up the studio. We leave the studio, I go to the house. Everything's cool, right? The next morning, my manager calls me and is like, you won't believe this shit. Rock called me and told me that when he came home, all his equipment was gone out of his studio. He's pissed because he's blaming it on us, like pretty much me, because I guess he felt like my manager wouldn't do it because she was a girl. So under his impression, he didn't know the other people that was there. He just knew me and he knew my manager. So... He was pissed, kind of like accusing me kind of of stealing the stuff. And I'm like, wait, what? Like we left, we put the keys under the mat, everything, right? We call Step, Step don't answer the phone. We still don't know what happened, but I know, 
this is what I know for a fact to this day that they they went they stayed they we all left together they circled back around took the key from under the mat went into this man's house took all this man's equipment and flew back to New Orleans with his equipment and the only person that had a car was Step Junior so Step Junior then helped these dudes steal out of out of out of my manager's close friend's studio and this dude was on the phone crying because that was like his life earnings of like stuff that he saved up to get in his studio that was his home studio they took his monitors they took his mic they took all of his equipment i felt so crushed because he didn't trust any of us after that like he didn't he he believed my manager he believed that it wasn't me he believed it wasn't her and we pretty much was like, yo, it's them dudes. But he didn't mess with nobody else after that. And he didn't mess with my manager too much after that either. You know what I'm saying? So it just shows you that like, man, a, a, a great relationship can be just burnt if you bring the wrong people around. That was the biggest lesson I learned. And I think about that situation still to this day, man. Like back then, that, that was a time back in LA. Anybody that's from LA know that like, a lot of studios was getting hit. That was like the, the home studio age when like everybody was like not going to big studios and was just investing in a home studio equipment back then. And in a home studios back then, you had to invest at least $3,000 to get your music popping. Like it wasn't just like laptop software back then. Like you needed a $3,000 or up studio to get popping. You know what I'm saying? And now that age is starting to come back, which is crazy. But the whole purpose of me telling y'all this story or if stories like this is to just show you how easy it is to come and go in this industry. You know what I'm saying? And since I've been in this industry my entire life, man, I've seen so many people come and go, man. And like, I'm gonna start letting y'all know in my videos, man, I've I've had family and friends that have started music and fell out of the industry. You know, I've had music industry peers from producers and artists, record label A&Rs and record label executives that have all came and went. And it's crazy because you think everyone's in it for the long haul like you. But it just shows you that like one stupid move can get you out of the industry. So like now I went from respecting this dude step to like everybody wanted to beat step up like step. And then I, and then it's crazy because we found out that step was doing a lot of other goofy stuff out here in L.A. and was ended up, you know, in situations where he kind of got pushed out of the industry. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you all this when y'all look him up, y'all going to see. He a, he, he, he a nurse now. You know what I'm saying? He a registered nurse now. So he came into the industry. His pops was the head of, of urban music at Interscope, came in and got handed an AR position, and then phase yourself out of the industry for being goofy. You know what I'm saying? The one thing I pride myself on is I've been in this industry my whole life, and I have not been a part of any goofy situations like that. Because number one, I've always been taught since a kid to be on my own time. So I've never been on another person's time. And I was always raised to always have your own stuff so you don't have to rely on anybody else. So I came into the industry with my own equipment. People always came to my house. I never collaborated with no producers. I never went to no producer's house to create music except for my manager. And even when he started acting goofy, I went and bought my own drum machine. You know what I'm saying? So the key is... Don't ever, you don't ever want to put yourself in a situation where if the rug was pulled from under you, you would fall. That was, that's something that I prided myself on in this industry is that you never want to be relying on someone or something to the point to where if the rug is pulled from under you, you will fall. You want to be able to have a rug pulled from under you and you don't even notice it. You know what I'm saying? That's how strong and sturdy you want to be in this industry and on a dream chase period. Look, it is what it is, man. Like, you know, we gonna put names out there, man. It, I'm not even tripping, like, we, uh, but that's just how it is. We gonna put names out there. I really don't even care at this point. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to, to OG Big Step. No disrespect to him. This is a situation that happened. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want goofy things said about you, don't be a part of Gucci, goofy situations. It's that simple. I'm gonna start telling y'all stories of goofy stuff I've done, not like that, but I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna expose myself in certain things too. So I look forward to showing y'all stories like this. I want y'all to get in the comments. I want y'all to like if you if you if you watch the video, comment on it. Show love. It take me all this time to, to make these videos. 
I'm gonna take you five seconds to show some love. Say thanks for the content, Dame. You know, much love. I support you. I appreciate your grind. I'm proud of you. I love you. Something. Get in the comments. Do that. I see y'all in the next video. Peace. Ten, 10 plus years, dude. I know, for real, right? <laughs> How many years was it? It's been, it's been over 10 so years. So y'all don't do the fist bump out there, huh? No. <laughs>